inspired uh, for me and for a lot of us in San Francisco and you know pretty much all of us just coming together it just feels like a GLC again yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. So, like, all of you guys to be able to give hugs and to you know just be around I've never been around really this many people in about a year wow so, so my soul is refreshed by mm. the incredible Denver trip thank you so our Denver Dallas trip thank you so much Jackie for your very sweet introduction we love you we're so proud of you you've done such a great job oh. here and Daniela as well and so many warm-hearted kind sisters are introducing themselves to me and it's just an incredible group of women and it's great to be here with Sam he's a Denver trip Righteous will live by faith. Yeah. I love this passage. It's incredible uh, scripture that tells us that you know we are called to obey. We are called as His redeemed, as His daughters, wow. as His princesses, right? As His elect, as those who are justified, which means just as if I've never sinned. We're called as His daughters to live by faith. This is a command that we're to obey. And you know what? I can't think um, of a better way to illustrate this passage than to start off by imitating my husband and showing you a video. So let's, let's dim the lights and let's roll the video. Don't lose heart. Wait till the end. Trust me. Thank you. Come on. as it's possible to make.
Its parents, are there. Its parents are there to meet it. Right? 
can't control where you're going to hit, what's going to happen next. You have no idea what the outcome is. What if you really die? Is God going to, you know, what if you really go through the, is God going to get you back up? Um, it, you know, you just had to entrust yourself to God for 2020. But here's the thing. We've all done it. And we're all here. We all made it. And just give yourself a round of applause. to that 2021 is just we're on degree of pastures because I don't think that's what God's going to allow. This right. is the year of mountain moving faith. Right. God has a whole set of encouraging times but also struggles and challenges that he's going to allow us to go through and build our faith yeah. to get the mountain moving faith and the prayers that we want answered, right? Yeah. So God is going to put us through this year. Yeah. And I think that if I've learned anything from this year, um, and I've learned a lot, but the, the major thing I've learned this year is to stop running from the pain. Just stop, stop running from the pain and stop trying to find greener pastures. Stop waiting for something else like 2021, right? I've learned, if anything, to surrender. And what I wanted to talk about this afternoon, that the way to really fly, my sisters, the way to really live by Faith is to die. Wow. Come on, Let's take a look at Jesus. Let's go to Hebrews chapter 5, verse 7. Awesome. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And Hebrews chapter 5, verse 7, it says, During the days of Jesus' life on earth, he offered up prayers and petitions with loud cries and tears to the one who could save him from death. And he was heard because of his reverent submission. Though he was a son, he learned obedience. Jesus learned yeah. obedience from what he suffered. Once made perfect, he became the source of eternal salvation for all who obeyed him and was designated by God to be the high priest in the order of the cross today. Here we see Jesus, our Lord, our Master, our Savior, who we follow. That's why we're all here. Mm -hmm. And what does he do? He learns obedience through suffering. Mm -hmm. God decided that Come on, this is how he was going to teach his son, the son of God, Amen. through suffering. And if suffering was good enough to teach the son of God, what do you think God's going to do with us? <laughs> Don't you want to go through what Jesus went through and become what we're supposed to become? Amen. Yes, Sarah. We want to let God do the work in our lives. And to use that tool on us, teach us. Yes, God, we want that, right? God. The way that he dealt with pain and suffering was by prayer and petition, loud cries and tears. Was that in your week at all last week? <laughs> or did you sit in your bed with your covers pulled up? Having fun? <laughs> what did Jesus do? You know what's interesting? The Greek word for supplication is hecateria. Which is kind of interesting. So, in, you know, prayers and supplication, sis. prayers, petition. I mean, that's another translation. Right? But this word, hecateria, I'm probably botching it. It means an olive branch wrapped in whole. Because it's what the ancient Greek worshipers, you know, held. And they waved and they expressed it, you know, in their desperate desire to pray to God for their prayers to be answered. Wow. And as Jesus would have it, it's not a coincidence that this prayer of Jesus his supplication took place in a garden filled with olives, wow. right? The garden of olives. And where was the wolf? Well, he supplied the wolf. Symbolically, he was the lamb of God. Wow. And so his disciples back then wouldn't understood what he was doing. But they didn't like it, right? They fell asleep. <laughs> yeah. And through prayer and petition, he, he cried. I mean, he fought to be righteous. Wow. Jesus fought to surrender. He fought to really die. The only reason why he was able to die on the cross is because he died every day before that. Wow. It says in Matthew chapter 26, verse 45, My father, if it is not possible for this cup to be taken away unless I drink it, may your will be done. Yeah. Jesus learned obedience from when he suffered. Wow. He surrendered to the pain and he died to himself. He died so he could really fly. Wow. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I was, I'm so inspired by Tim and Leanne Kernan, our oh leaders here. Right? And I'm so inspired by their life. And we yeah. do imitate this. And 
they imitated this example of Jesus wow. in so many ways. And they held um, a tribe overseers meeting the other day, and they both shared. It was really impactful. And Leanne just shared so vulnerably about how this year she's had many times that she just felt like she was at her breaking point. I don't know if any of you have had that or experienced that this, you know, this year. And she just talked about how what we do as disciples is really hard at times. We're fighting a galactic battle against Satan and his demons. Like, right. what? Mm -hmm. like what we do is crazy. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. We're fighting against Satan and it's not safe. It's mm -hmm. not safe. Right. And it's not easy. And last year was wild and it was crazy, right? Yeah. In so many ways. But it's all about perspective and it's all about lessons learned. Yeah. And the lesson learned is that, you know, when you feel like you're at your breaking point, we've got to remind ourselves that that uncomfortable feeling that we're going through, yeah. sometimes we can feel like, I just don't want to sin. You know, sometimes that uncomfortable thing that God's putting us through, the trials in our lives and the circumstances, it's called growing. Yeah. <laughs> it's called learning. To become more like Jesus, okay? Coming into this new year, 
I had a choice. Thank you. I had a decision to make. You know, am I going to stay here? Am I going to stay defeated? Mm -hmm. Or am I going to die? Mm -hmm. And you know, as God would have it, sometimes we get into Bible studies with people, but it's really for us. Yeah. <laughs> sometimes they make it, sometimes they don't. I don't know, God just came in and, and I was studying with this really, this really awesome girl in Berkeley. She was super special. But you know, and I came into her studies a little bit later. And the girls told me that, um, you know, she's just not really moving. Like, she's not really doing the things we're asking. I'm like, well, why is she on the cross? But hey. And I put it in that study, and she started to confess her sin, but she doesn't really, she didn't really have a sin list. Do you know what I mean? She didn't really give her heart. And so I just kind of, you know, I'm like, I'm like messaging the girls virtually. I'm like, hey, do you mind if I share? Like, AKA take over. And so I was like, <laughs> yeah. you know, do you mind really asking? You seem very, like, sad. You seem defeated. You seem like you just don't really want to do this. Like something's blocking you. Like, what do you think? She's still blind, and that's what it is. And so I was like, you know what? Let me show you a few scriptures. Let me show you um, a, a, a scripture about a man who's defeated. And I showed her, we don't have time, but the story about the rich young ruler. You guys know that. Yeah. yeah. And this was a guy who's super religious who um, thought he was okay, right? He would be like the perfect disciple in the sense. But he had one thing. Um, he had one thing, and we all have that one thing yeah. um, that God is asking us to give up. Yeah. Like God is asking us to surrender, and she definitely had one. And what happened? You know, the rich young ruler walked away sad. He was defeated. And I said, so you can um, you can stay here. You can be defeated, or you can choose to die. Those are your choices. Let's look at a man who died. Let's look at a group of people who died, who chose to die. To really fly, yeah. you know, and we looked at um, in Acts chapter two, right? After they learned about Jesus, it was like, okay, they're like, what do we gotta do? Yeah. This is repent and be baptized, right? Yeah. That's the heart of somebody who's dying. Yeah. So if you're wondering how do I die to whatever it is in your life, you gotta ask your disciple, you gotta ask your women, maybe your husband. Yeah. Trust me, your husband will tell you exactly. Yeah. But uh, ask somebody what you gotta do, right? And those are the examples because someone who has really died has surrendered. They'll do whatever it takes. And when you do whatever it takes, when you have the heart of repentance, the cool thing is, is your whole body language, your whole life changes, right? Your whole outlook on, on everything changes. It says in Acts chapter 3, verse 19, repent then and turn to God so that your sins may be wiped out. And so at times of refreshing, will come. how do you know you really give it? You're refreshed. Yeah. How do you know you died? Do you feel refreshed today, my sister? Wow. Do you do? Yeah. If you don't, then go after. Really repenting of that one thing. Yeah. Yeah. And sadly, this woman, this woman didn't go after her relationship with God yet. I believe she'll come back. Amen. Really essence, where's essence? She was kind of like her. I remember studying this out with her. She walked away, and then she came back. So there's that time. But this woman didn't. But I did. Amen. And I took my own advice. And one thing that I decided to do, I just went on a prayer walk. And um, I decided, okay, I'm going to fast. So, okay, God, I'm just going to really fast. I'm going to go after this. But, God, I want to fast just to be close to you. Yeah. I just want to have a super close relationship with you. But, God, if I'm going to do this for a week, you've got to put a, a theme scripture on my heart. And before I even finish saying those words out loud, God put a scripture. And the scripture, and I, of course, I got on my phone, so I always pray with my phone, so I can, you know, sometimes when you're praying, God just puts, like, ideas and yeah. thoughts, yeah. And, so I'm just on your phone, right? But not in a way that gets you distracted. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. okay. I got on my phone, I looked up the scripture. Come on, Sam. And it says, Jeremiah 30, verse 2, uh, 21b, it says, I will bring her near, and she will come close to me, for who is she who will devote herself? To me, to the Lord. Don't you want to devote yourself to God so that you can be close to Him? So that why we're all here. And so I was like, I'm gonna fast, and you know what? What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna not put together my um, prayer goals for the year. I'm gonna let God do it. I'm gonna do it a week. I'm just gonna go on a prayer walk every day. I'm gonna pray, and I'm gonna ask God with my phone out. What do you want? What kind of dreams do you have for my women? And I would pray over my women by name, and God put things on my heart. But it wasn't me, it was God. Yeah. God, what do you want for my, for my kids here? 
What do you want for my what do you want for me? What do you want for the church? God, like get you put your dreams on my heart. And I can't share with you guys, but God put dreams on my heart. <laughs> I have new visions of this year that I'm fired up about. <laughs> You know, or like the time in my quiet time writing my sin list, but I just kept my sin list open throughout the week, not to focus on it and get down, but when it came to that point in time in prayer, four things would come to mind and I could, you know, so it took me a week to put it together and I confessed it to three different people. And it was super awesome. And after wow. I did that piece, I felt so refreshed. Yeah. And today I still feel fired up and refreshed. Yeah. <laughs> verse 22 it says we've got to go through many hardships to enter the kingdom of God so wow. suffering is inevitable if we're going to get to heaven it's part of it wow. and God uses these things to help us become who he envisioned for each of us yeah right and at the end of this passage we read in Hebrews 5 9 just write it down it says once uh, made perfect Jesus became the source of eternal salvation wow. so it's like through all of our trials and our bumps down the mountain along the way we are becoming a source of salvation for not just us, but other people as yeah. well. There's a point yeah. to our yeah. pain, the yeah. purpose yeah. to our pain. Yeah. And so I think because of the training we went through last year from God, this year, 2021, it's going to be incredibly fruitful. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I really believe that. And if you haven't done so already, I'm going to encourage you to fast. Pray, surrender. Um, let's not let this year be a year where we're defeated, but let's die. Let's die so we can really learn to fly. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. Number two, Monty. number two is called the powerful flight. Amen. So here's the, thing. the bird almost died. Yes. He fell over and over again. He gets back up, right? He regains his strength and power, and then what happens? He learns to fly, wow. which is really incredible. Yeah. And so, you know, how can 2021 be a year of flying, of soaring for the Lord? <laughs> for some of you, I think that we, you might have to learn to be taught to fly all over again. Mm -hmm. wow. Sometimes we just have to start back at the beginning, right? And just hit the reset button. Um, so what does it say after this example about Jesus dying to himself and surrendering? Well, let's keep it. Let's go back to um, Hebrews 5, verse 11. Come on, Sarah. Verse 11, it says, we have much to say about this, about Jesus dying. Wow. And it's an incredible example. There's so much to say. But it's hard to make clear to you because you're no longer trying to understand. Wow. It says, in fact, though, by this time, you ought to be teachers. You need someone to teach you the elementary truths of God's word all over again. You need milk, not solid food. Anyone who lives on milk being still an infant is not acquainted with the teachings about righteousness, but solid food is for the mature who by constant use have trained themselves to distinguish good from evil. Wow. So I think, you know, some of us may have started out 2020 um, like Jesus with just visions and faith and reverent submission, right? Amen. But then what happens, you know, maybe you started to go backwards. Right? As, the thing, as things got challenging throughout the year. And, you know, sometimes we're mature, become mature, mature, but then what? You start to become immature. Or worse, maybe you're already there today. And then what do you see? You see younger people, spiritually, much younger than you, start to just blast past you in their faith and in their maturity. Right? Why? Because because of their Bible knowledge and because they're really going after this. Anyway. Yeah. Why? Because you become slow to learn. Yeah, that's so when you want to take that leap of faith, you don't. And so mm -hmm. you have to wow. start back from the beginning. Wow. Wow. And partly, you know, I think why do you start back from the beginning? Sometimes it's just pride, right? We don't want to get back up like that little bird. We don't yeah. want to learn from our mistakes. And, and sometimes we just think we're somewhere we're not. We can get faked out. Like, oh, I'm pushing for No, no, no. You're, you become mature. Yeah. Oh, and your pride is walking to you. Come on, Sarah. Come on, Sarah. And we become deceived in our and it stunts our growth spiritually. Absolutely. And instead of just relying on God and trusting Him and letting go, just whatever the consequences are, God, it's in your hands. Instead of surrendering, there becomes a fear. And wow. control so and a taking back of yourself wow. and your life and stop dying. Wow. Because it's painful and it's hard. And you just, just want to go watch Netflix. Man. 
<laughs> and your emotions become immature. I think as women, that's how we can really become immature. Right? Yeah. Uh, let our emotions fly out the handle. Yeah. And then what happens? The old demons come back. Yeah. Let's go backwards. And I fear that maybe that's happened to some of us. And we can come um, into a meeting like this and be fired up, right, when we're around people. But where are you at when you're home behind your back? Yeah. What do you do when we're not all together like this? How do you really spend your time? Yeah. I think some of us have become recluse. Wow. And God's really allowed the pandemic to test our faith. Because yeah. he wants to get us together. Come out there. But I want to help us learn to fight again. Like, but not by our own power, by God's power. Yeah. Yeah. Come on, so I'm going to read you guys a scripture. This is what it's going to take. Okay. Ephesians 6, verse 10. Oh, I love this passage. <laughs> Finally, be strong in the Lord Amen. and in his mighty power. Put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's sleep. Put on the full armor of God so that when the day of evil comes, you might be able to stand your ground. And after you've done everything to stand, stand firm then with the belt of truth buckled around your waist, with the breastplate of righteousness in place, and with your feet fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. In addition to all this, Take up the shield of faith with which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. And pray the spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests. With this in mind, be alert and always keep on praying for the Lord's people. I love this passage. This is how we're to live and survive this Christian race. <laughs> We've got to be fully clothed with all the right outfit, the gear. We've got to get on our gear, right? And I love uh, I loved Tim and his analogies, and Tim has used this analogy for me a few times this year in our D times, so I'm going to share with you for this passage. He says that in order for us to survive the high altitudes and the pressure of the Christian atmosphere, we've got to put on our spacesuit. <laughs> We've got to wear a spacesuit, which is really just the full armor of God, okay? All the things we just read. Because what happens? We're taken up to 60, 70, 80, 90, 100, you know, sea level, miles above sea level. And I guarantee God will take you there if you're not already there, right? <laughs> taken above sea level. And then we've got to wear this, this suit, this enclosure, or we can't breathe. Wow. Or we'll die. Yeah. <laughs> There's no oxygen, right? And, and, and it's, I'm not talking about the righteous kind of dying, like people wouldn't really die. Yeah. <laughs> um, and here's the thing, we all need to wear this because I don't want to see any of you guys die. Yeah. Yeah. I want to see us all back here next year. Fired up and more faithful, right? Yeah. 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 So let's talk about the space suit, number one. Number one, we got to remember, and this is huge for women, the battle is not against flesh and blood, guys. Every year I get a new Bible. There's some thin 
kind of teaching about the devotional life, so I'm not going to go into it too much, but every yeah. year, the Bible, I love to study Bible, and I love yeah. reading, um, it's called the Enjoying the Word. <laughs> here's, here's what I want to encourage you guys, but if you don't do the practice of uh, reading the Bible, one of my interns in SF, I, I was telling her to do this, and she's like, well, I never really read all of Genesis. <laughs> guys, read the Bible over here, like the entire Bible, okay? Start with Genesis and just read four chapters a day. And if you start today by November, you're done. Yeah. And your faith is going to be built so much when you just see chronologically the stories and how it all fits together. Yeah. 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 So I encourage you guys to do that. Read, um, read books, you know, readers, um, leaders are readers. And you know, the other thing is sometimes there's even things we need to read that aren't spiritual that will help us be more spiritual. Yeah. You know, I just like with a sister, I'm getting your book, How to Win Friends and Influence People. <laughs> sometimes you just need to read books to help us out. <laughs> Number three, The Breastplate of Righteousness. Jacob challenged everyone to write a sin list. I'm not going to go there. I'm running out of time. Number four, help. I want to talk about help. Okay, this is very important. Yeah, come on, let us know. How are we going to impact the most amount of people who are not healthy? Yeah. Okay. yeah I have a deep awesome. conviction. And maybe now because I'm going to turn 40 this year, I'm starting to see things and feel things. And it's, oh, I want to make it like, I want to see my kids get married and yeah. my grandkids become disciples. And, I don't, I mean, I don't want to look super old, but do you know what I mean? I, I want to be impactful and not worry about my health and my body. So I'm really going after it. And I think that for some of us, um, food is a big thing. Yeah. I'm just going to talk about this real quick because, you know, the pandemic hit and we're like starting to cook a lot more, right? Which is really fun. It's exciting. It's awesome. But then it's like we start to gain the quarantine fatigue. <laughs> Right in Romans chapter one, and let's just read right above it. Okay. The Bible says, 
For I am not ashamed of the gospel, right? Now, before I read the rest of this passage, what does ashamed mean? I am not going to try to pronounce this in the Greek. Okay. We're with you. I am not going to pronounce it. We're with you. But it means fear of embarrassment, feeling shame, which prevents one from doing something, reluctance, and fear of humiliation. So what Paul is saying, he's like, I don't fear any humiliation. <laughs> right? Like, I don't fear any embarrassment at all for the gospel. Isn't that incredible? Let's keep reading. Because it's the power of God that brings salvation to everyone who believes. First for the Jew, then for the Gentile. For in the gospel, the righteousness of God is revealed, a righteousness that is by faith from first to last. Wow. As is written, the righteousness is by faith. Wow. You know, Paul is writing this letter to the Romans, um, to the disciples there, knowing that this city was a crazy, volatile, wicked place, okay? The disciples were being um, persecuted. It was steeped in immorality, in paganism. There was emperor worship. It was a crazy place, okay? Oh, and he knew going in there, they would hate him. Wow. Not like people look at you like at Target. They would hate him. Do you understand what I'm saying? Okay. And he went in there unashamed. Wow. Isn't that amazing? Wow. Think about it. All that he had been through up until this point, he had reasons to be damaged and to be yeah. filled with shame and have just a little bit of fear. Yeah. Right? He was imprisoned in Philippi before this. Wow. He was wow. chased out of Thessalonica. He was smuggled out of Damascus and Berea. He was laughed at in Athens. He was considered a fool in Corinth. He wow. was declared a blasphemer, right, and a fugitive in Jerusalem. He was stoned and left for dead at Lystra. How was your week? Why didn't you share your week? Wow. Right? Can you imagine that? It makes our life this, this year look like Disney. Yeah. And his life was so inspiring. He didn't look down at all. There was nothing he wasn't willing to endure. He was our brother. He was our brother Paul. We would imitate. Why do you struggle, guys? Think about it. Why do you struggle? We're showing your faith. Do you, are your friends going to hurt? People are going to look down on you? Maybe they'll say no, right? Like, what is it? You're going to look weird. You might get persecuted. Is it really worth it? Wow. So that, I mean, how many people have we stopped from becoming disciples? Wow. How many people committed suicide because we were shaped? Wow. What? Come on, Sarah. We're talking about these. Come on. Come on, Sarah. There's no excuse. Yeah. Paul had a thousand excuses, but he had one. Right. Wow. wow. And guys, I'm preaching to myself here. There's many times this year I was flat ashamed. And I came home and it's like, God, I'm so sorry. Give me another reason to go to Target. <laughs> you know, like, I'm going to go back. I want to show my face. I don't want to live like that. Yeah. Yeah. I want to yeah. live just a, a powerful example of life evangelism. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and I think what helps me is that Paul knew God was with him, and that he had the power of the gospel that we yeah. yeah. bring yeah. yeah. people's life. It's not about us, it's about the power of what we're teaching. Yeah. Yeah. The gospel is powerful. Right. Come on, yeah. And so the power of the flight, the power is all about God. Yeah. Yeah. He didn't fear death. You know, and sometimes you've got to remind yourself before you go into places and you do give way to fear, like, what's the worst thing that could happen? Yeah. I think Paul did that. I think he's like, what's the worst thing that could happen? And Paul was like, I'm going to die. Okay. For us, we're like, what's the worst thing that could happen? Right. They say no. Uh, yeah. Ouch. Like, come on, guys. I know. We've got to put on our space suit. We've got to keep it on. So yeah. I know my time's running out. To close out, I want to read this really cool. Credo by Bob Moorhead, and it's so inspiring. It summarizes the scripture in Romans 1 verse 16. It says, I am a part of the fellowship of the unashamed. I have the Holy Spirit power. The die has been cast. I've stepped over the line. The decision has been made. I'm a disciple of Jesus Christ. I won't, I won't back up. I won't let up. Slow down, back away, and be still. My past is redeemed. My present makes sense. Wow. My future is secure. I'm finished and done with low living, sight walking, small planning, smooth knees, colorless dreams, tame visions, mundane talking, chintzy giving, and dwarf to gold. I no longer need preeminence, prosperity, position, promotions, plotted to popularity. I don't have to be right. First tops, recognized, praise, regarded, rewarded. I now live by presence, learn by faith, wow. love by patience, lift by prayer, and labor by power. My pace is set, 
My gate is fast. My goal is heaven. My road is narrow. My way is rough. My companions few. My guide is reliable. My mission is clear. I cannot be bought, compromised, tiered, burned away, turned back, deluded, or delayed. I will not flinch in the face of sacrifice. Hesitate in the presence of adversity. Negotiate at the table of the enemy. Ponder at the pool of popularity. A meander in the maze of mediocrity. I won't give up, back up, let up, or shut up until I preach up, pray up, pray up, serve up, stay up, and call to praise. I am a disciple of Jesus Christ. I must go until he returns, give until I drop, preach until all I know, and work until he comes. And when he comes to get his own, we will have no problem recognizing me. My color will be clear, for I am not ashamed of the gospel because of the power of God for the salvation of everyone who believes. My sisters, let's take this with us. Let's not be ashamed of the gospel. Let's die this year so that we can really learn to fly. Let's give yes. her another round of applause.